fight, fuck, marry. Steven Seagal, Chuck Norris, the dad from Family Matters. I'm fucking Chuck Norris. <laughs> now, someone clip that. Welcome back to the BJJ Balance Podcast. My name is Kenny, um, and I'm here with my co-host, Matt. What's up, everybody? Um, thanks for uh, all the support thus far. Um, if you want to follow us, that would be great at BJJ Balance everywhere, Spotify, Pandora. Um, we owe all of our growth so far to you guys, and thanks for all the support. We're getting a lot of positive feedback. We're getting some negative feedback and <laughs> some stuff, but for the most part, you guys are happy with the product, and... We appreciate you guys for that. So, um, thank you. Uh, it's Halloween, motherfuckers. It is a Halloween morning. And uh, so, yeah, happy Halloween. First holiday episode. Spooky. Everybody's yeah. like, are you going to dress up in Halloween costumes? <laughs> um, <laughs> I was like, should we be in geese for this episode? That would have been fucking hilarious. Bro, Tony texts me. Damn like, it. Why didn't we think of that? Tony texts me and he's just like. Watch me. I'm just going to show up in a gi. I'm like, that would be hella awkward. Oh, my God. Okay. Hence, from this day forth, every year that there's a Halloween episode. We're in gis. We'll be wearing full, no gi gear or full gear. (laughs) Just full gear in the couch. Uh, From this day forth. Yep. Every Halloween. Next year, guys, we got you. I will buy. When I do nogi, it's usually shorts and like a rash guard. I will on Halloween. I will go ham and I will buy a specific matching <laughs> nogi long sleeve top and matching spats. <laughs> yeah, next year we're full <laughs> gear, dude. We're full gear next year, one hundred percent. That we dropped the ball on that one. Yeah, that, that's a mistake. Also, I want to get into this because this is kind of Halloweeny. Tell me the backstory between your handle. What's your IG handle? Okay. The freak party. Can I, can, can, okay. At the freak party. I need to know because I think people were asking like, what the freak this, party? It's okay. Well, this is you a be... stripper DJ? Nah. Like nah. what's going on, dude? So um, this is going to be way off into the weeds. It has nothing to do with jujitsu, but fuck it. When I originally went to school, I went for journalism. Um, and my biggest inspiration as a writer um, was Hunter S. Thompson. And Hunter S. Thompson, at one point in time, uh, ran for the sheriff of uh, Woody Creek, which is a town he lived in in Colorado, which is a, a basically Aspen, Sheriff of Aspen is what he's trying to be. <clears throat> so he was running for political party, and the political party that he ran under was the Freak Party. Oh, okay. So, so you were just kind of being like the hype man. So, um, and then I, I don't know if you know this. Joe Rogan is a, a, another person whom I have immense respect for. He's also a big Hunter S. Thompson fan as well, and he has a giant freak party sign in his uh, podcast studio. And so when I was looking for a name to stream under, for, like when I was streaming video games and whatnot, I wanted something just different and not like gamery, if that makes sense. So freak party. Are you still actively on the sticks? Are you just getting with it? I play every weekend. I don't play during the week ever. Um, that's just a commitment to my family because <clears throat> it's one of those things that I can definitely like be really into. When I met my wife, I, I didn't even have a game. I think I had a PlayStation 3. I never played it. Didn't didn't touch it. When PS4, when they released the Call of Duty World War II, that's when I was doing jujitsu the first time around. And two of the guys that I was actively doing jujitsu with started playing that like oh you should you should get this da, da, da. so i bought a ps4 and i started playing that a lot and then it like became pr- pretty time consuming i put it down for a little bit <clears throat> when i built a gaming pc it kind of went ham and i was like okay i won't play video games during the week like when it's family time like i won't take away from my family time to play so then i started streaming and i started playing at night time like late at night so Basically, Friday nights, Saturday nights, I'll I, I'll play till midnight or two, just depending on how much energy I have. And um, then I'll play like Saturday and Sunday during the daytime while my kid's taking a nap. I have like I used a big gamer. Gaming was kind of like my babysitter growing up. Okay, my yes. parents were wild, and I'd just be on the sticks. Like here, here's a 3do, here's a Jaguar. Oh, you had a 3do, damn, dude I, dude! I had them all, bro. Damn. Every system: Sega CD, Sega Saturn. Nintendo and Super Nintendo. Most of us had to pick a system, not 64. Matt. No, no. My parents were living that wildlife, so they're like, Matt will stay in his room. If we just buy him one of these. If we just buy him one of these. And I had every system, you know, Damn. there was, you know. 
And uh, I was game all the time. The game was my life. I, I would be, I was on freaking, uh, uh, for first person shooters, I was on, uh, what's it called? Clans. I was on a couple clans. Oh. I was like ranked and all this stuff. Like gaming was my thing. We'd have these big LAN parties. I'd take this big ass 700 pound TV over to my friend's house. We'd have all these TVs in the living room. We'd be having these clan fights. Like it was the, the, you know that thing. I was like, Pe- do I wish there was the, gaming. if I knew it was the good old days, right? You know right. that saying they have, like, like yeah. Just no one told me it was the good old days. Like those were the good old days. I was all into it. Now I still think I'm that guy, and I'm like, PS 5s out, buying it, boom, buy yeah. it. Cannot play that thing for. Sh- I can't get time. I'm, I'm, I'm so overbooked. I'm a I'm a I'm a keep or mouse and keyboard. PC guy and um, I can't stand you guys. Yeah, I play with a couple guys from your gym. I play with uh, with Nate. Um, yeah, he's always trying to tell Nate's always like, "Hey man, let's get this game. Let's get on there, me and Joey." Yeah, and I'm like, "Look at bro, I played with Joey once. I can't fuck with the PC guys. And you know why? Because I like to lay down on my belly or lay on my back <laughs> with my hand behind my head <laughs> playing I, games. I can see you on your stomach with your feet up your in the air, feet, feet crossed, kicking. dude." <laughs> On the edge of my bed, like, hey, I don't like, hey, I can't, I can't sit. I'm not a guy who's going to sit there. I just, on the, on the, in the chair and just like play looking at my computer screen. And the guys will be like that. I know they're really competitive in it. But your screen's too big. It's going to be too slow. I'm like, I got a 75. Yeah. It's like, no, you have a little monitor. You'll be way better. I'm like, I'm not going to downgrade a little monitor. (laughs) I don't like, I'm in it for the, uh, the the relaxing and just playing of the game. So I I play um I, I've been playing a lot of Fortnite lately, but the last couple of weeks we've been kind of revamping Halo. Um, they did a, a nice little update on it, and it seems really fun and playable. So uh, a couple of my friends have dove back into that. Like we're playing ranked Halo and whatnot. So I'm, I'm, I uh, to me PC computer is only good for two things: paying bills and watching porn. Uh, I. <laughs> And like you know what I mean, like that's what it is. I can't. I just can't. Do I it. edit the pot on a computer. I know you do. <laughs> hey, he's the magic. We I I sent. I didn't post it. Maybe I'll post it now that we're talking about it. But I sent him something, a picture of Ninja Turtles like Kang and freaking yeah, the brain. What was his name? Um, I don't know. But then, you know, I know if you know Ninja about. Turtles, there's like. The little brain guy is in the belly of the guy. I'm the big guy. This guy is the brain of the whole thing. He's got the equipment. He knows how to edit. He does all the stuff. So, um, yeah, Kenny is the man. And now, and there might be some confusion on the pod of who's who. Right. Okay. Because we, I do comment. Sometimes the, the, the Instagram will make me comment as my personal IG, and I'm trying to comment. I try to comment every time as O's Nation BJJ. Mm-hmm. So if you see O's Nation BJJ, that's me. If you see at BJJ Balance, that's Kenny. Yeah. Kenny runs the the BJJ Balance Instagram. I told him when we started this, I said, listen, bro, I cannot be editing videos. <laughs> I already edit enough videos. Yeah. If I edit any more videos, my wife will literally murder me in my sleep. <laughs> like, I cannot. Like, I don't have that much poop time, <laughs> you know, because if I'm taking a shit, I'm making a meme. Yeah. And that's so every time you see a meme pop, boom, 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 <laughs> no, your boy's probably dropping a deuce. <laughs> Cause that's when I make them. So I can't, I cannot, I don't have the time. So if you see BJJ balance, obviously if you see the freak party, that's Kenny and meathead BJJ. That's also my personal one. If you want to follow that, but Oast nation is me freak party and BJJ balance is Kenny. So there you go. Cause sometimes I'll be like, they think I'm BJJ balance also. Right. And I'm like, it's not me. Cause I I'll have, have somebody nice- in the DMS be like, Hey Matt, Bull. I'm like, this is, this is Kenny, but also yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Actually talk- he'll he'll well, get say- the message. Yeah, well, they they'll say something to Matt like um, uh, they were referencing the pod, and they're just like, "Hey, I know Matt, or hey, man, I know that you were talking about moving to Texas. Uh, there's a gym out there." And I'm like, "No, no, no." I said, "This is Kenny. I'm the one who's moving to Texas. I'm trying to convince Matt to move out to Texas and start a check mat." We we have an app. <clears throat> Obviously, we talk all day long, me and Kenny. So if you message BJJ Balance questions or any answers it's going to he sends though. it right to me and i do the advice for if i get questions on Oast nation i send it right to him so we see everything so it's all fair game whoever you decide to message yeah. um and i think we wanted to get into like what this podcast is yeah so there's there's some sometimes there's some viral moments and sometimes there's some hot topics there's a lot of back and forth and 
none of this, like, I'm not super serious about most of the stuff that we talk about. We're just kind of shooting the shit, joking, talking some shit, like just a couple of boys who yeah. like jujitsu talking some shit about jujitsu. I understand that very much so. I'm I'm a blue belt, and like sometimes I even question that. But I'm a blue belt. Matt's a black belt. He's got oodles of experience on top of me. That being said, when I'm talking about something jujitsu wise. I'm doing so from the perspective of somebody who's been doing it a handful of years. Also, like most things in my life, there's no hill that I'm really willing to die on about most things. My opinion can be swayed on a lot of things. So if you can make a good argument as to why I may be wrong about something or you know how I feel about something is incorrect because of X, Y, and Z, and it makes sense, I may shift my opinion as well. And that's what we want. Yeah. We want you to disagree we want you to agree the reason we clip the clips that we clip is because we come together and think this could be a conversation where yeah. it either pisses people off or it makes people excited or makes people happy and we're gonna throw that out there and like the context so you guys uh, context is everything you text somebody hey what are you doing you can come off like hey what are you doing Right, you can't read the context right, of it, so right. it's kind of like our poster. The same thing. When I last week, when I said, "Hey, you don't start jujitsu until you become a black belt," okay, a lot of people got mad. A lot of people got pretty fired up on that, and I wasn't discrediting. You learn jujitsu at all the belts, but if you would have listened to the whole episode, which I know you guys are, because that's why you're here, because this isn't going to be cut, and you're listening to us now. I from after the clip, I'm like, there's guys that have so much more experience than me, and I'm a first degree. For example, Poncho has been a black belt as long as I've been training. Right. So the gap is so huge, and it's a never-ending journey. You guys got that, but on the clip on Instagram, people are like, what are you talking about getting all mad? Like, hey, man, I get it. Right. But, like, you're learning, but you I'm telling you, you really don't start learning until you get the black belt. Yeah, yeah, I, I think a lot of people, and, and I'm guilty of having this mindset in the past as well, you know, and maybe it's it's because of, like, we look at older martial arts, you know, like, or not o older, but, like, different, more established, you know, in the mainstream in the, like, 50s and shit martial arts, like, kung fu, taekwondo, karate, things like that. Like, if you were a black belt, you were a master, and that was it. Like, you don't really think, like, it, I don't know, it doesn't seem like those, are, those, those martial arts have been around for hundreds of years. I don't know if they're progressing at the same rate that jujitsu is. And I think the point was, is that jujitsu, and I think Chad brought this up in one of the comments on, on that post, is jujitsu is progressing at such a fast rate still that even black belts that have been black belts for 10 plus years are still learning because new things are being made, new new ways to do techniques, right. new, new, uh, new, new ways in and out of guards. You know, there's just... There's so many people that are, I don't know that a martial art has ever exploded the way that jiu-jitsu has. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I, I, what comes with UFC? UFC took off. Yeah. Jiu-jitsu took off. They, they're they like hand in hand, right? So if, well, think of, think of the, the, the concept of like AI. You know what I mean? It's this fast computer. You feed all the information into it. And now it's compiling all this information and processing new ideas at a rate faster than you can possibly imagine. Well, jujitsu's kind of worked that, that same kind of hive mentality. You've got so many people from so many backgrounds from all across the world, varying degrees of like, you know, brilliance as far mm -hmm. as, you know, IQ is concerned. And everybody is now looking at these basic moves and then they're developing them into new variations of that or whatnot. And, and it's like, YouTube growth, right? Yeah. Obviously back in the day, there was no social media, there was no YouTube. So you learn what you learn from your professor and you can't really, now you just type in a move and everybody's like, what if I try this? The right. what if, what if I do this is now on film. Yeah. And everybody has access to that when they're taking this shit. Right. And they're just in there like, whoa, dude, right. what if I did put my foot there? And then vice versa, somebody can look at that and come up with some sort of a counter to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, So it never ends. Yeah. It's like language. I think that that uh, age old phrase "There's nothing new under the sun" um, doesn't apply to jujitsu. I think it's uh, uh, jujitsu's um, uh, immune to that because there's so much that's new constantly, and it's just I don't mean new, new. I just mean variations of the same thing right. that haven't been tried before. And and on that, I kind of want to get into a little bit of mindset today. I want to get a mindset of like an old grappler versus the mindset 
of a young jujitsu guy, like the young jujitsu guy. He's, he's eager to, he's eager. He's, he doesn't have any injuries. He wants to win golds. He wants, he has visions of being world champion. He has, you know what I mean? Right. Like all this stuff. Well, the older guy, he's, you know, I'm just trying to stay healthy. I'm just trying to, I still have, I have more responsibilities. Right. I, right. I can't live out of my car. My family won't allow it. Right. I, I just, you know, so there's two different mindsets. And when they come together in class, there could be a little bit of a clash there sometimes when during sparring. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see where we're going with that. So it's kind of like you'll get an older guy like, hey, don't hurt me. He's not saying don't hurt me because he's a pussy. Right. He's I, saying don't hurt me because I have a career after I have no safe. <laughs> I am my wife's safety net. Yeah. I am. And I am my family's safety net and I can't afford to be hurt tomorrow. Right. And if you're a younger jujitsu guy, you got to take that respect. He's not, he's not being soft. He's not being single mom soft. As I would say, he's, you got to treat him like, Hey man, this guy's got a lot to lose. I mean, you might not. Right. So not everything is crazy. Plus no. he's not going to recover the same. Right. right. For exactly. The, for those of you that aren't 40 yet. Yeah. I, I, and I, the younger guy's going to, he's going to what? The younger guy's going to train every day, maybe twice a day. Right. The older guy's going to be like, I train Wednesdays. I train Thursdays. I have my daughter's soccer game on fr <laughs> Fridays right. and I got practice on this and I pick so-and-so up this day. Like, so right. there's life, right? And I had to work a little bit late. So maybe I'm not hitting Thursday this week. Right. You know what I mean? Like it just. Or I'm beat up from Wednesday. Yeah. And I got to listen to my body. Yeah. And so I think that like. The mindset of an older guy, there's a, there's a disconnect there. And I think when I was younger, I would be like the same way. I'd be like, hey, man, I would go after these old guys. And I'd be like, you know, I'm telling you, like, I was the spaz of the spaz. And I would take it out on them. And I would and I would uh, be kind of like not a good training partner when it comes to that. Like, hey, don't hurt me there. And I'd be like, this guy's a sissy. I'd be like, this guy's soft. Like, he's always complaining about his shoulder, his knee, or this. Or like, hey, do everything, but don't touch this. But like... And I and I've said in a couple of episodes ago is like if you're that hurt, don't roll because you're getting your guy a disservice. Yeah. But if you are rolling with a guy and he is injured or he's saying please be careful with me, listen to him. You would you would be careful with a female if she said that. Right. Don't uh don't exploit his injury either. If you're looking for hard rounds, you can find them with higher belts. And you can find them in your comp classes. Yeah. And you can find them, like we said, traveling to other open mats. I got a question. What the fuck's up with comp classes at like 11 o'clock in the afternoon? Is that because they don't have regular ass jobs? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it's I can't ever make a comp class no. anymore. I used to. My old schedule, I would graveyard to be home, comp class, then fall asleep, knock out. But a lot of comp classes are like at 11 in the afternoon. And I think that's just because... A lot of people who do the comp cast classes are full-time jujitsu guys okay. or uh, that's their job. They're professors. So they teach their morning class. They teach their evening classes, but 11 a.m. is for them. Gotcha. Right. So the, all the other follow professors meet each other or the high level guys meet each other and they, they compete there. Um, comp classes are also, you know, I love comp classes. dude. I, I love them and hate them. I know I'm going there and I'm getting smoked. But yeah, uh, the the way they start, I think that's the main reason is because a lot of the professors, that's when the professors can get their work in. Gotcha. So, okay. Personally, I, I mean, because look at Jason probably teaches in the morning. Yeah. He probably teaches in the evening when he goes to comp class. Uh, that that a lot of guys like that, or a lot of guys who own their own company, they'll you know, they right create their own schedule. So you're still good. Okay. Um. What is your mindset when it comes to rolling with like, are you the kind of guy to be like, Hey, you know what? I'm kind of, I'm hurt. Take it easy here. Take it easy there. Or are you just kind of like, I know this guy's wild. I'm just going to be super defensive and try not to get hurt or I'm going to roll with him anyways. Or are you just kind of like when they're picking partners, are you picking a partner right away? So you don't get squared up with that young guy who's real hungry. There's, <clears throat> I'll give everybody a shot at rolling once. And, um, you know, depending on how it goes, like it, it kind of allows me to kind of weigh out what their strengths or weaknesses is and how I'll be able to play my game effectively against them kind of a thing. Or like, hey, I know this guy's going to be difficult. This guy's going to be easy, that kind of a thing. Now, 
there's the spazzy white belts that come mm-hmm. in every once in a while. I'm a little cautious now. I think mostly just because of my age. And I haven't had any major injuries. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to mm-hmm. keep it that way as long as possible. So if um, if it's the spazzy white belt and I notice like out of the corner of my eye that he went a little wild on somebody earlier, like, you know, depending on his size. If he's spazzy and he's smaller, then I'm not super concerned about that. Like I'm not. But if it's somebody that's larger, my size, or bigger, and uh, and they're, they're spazzy and they're just trying to kill everybody, you know what I mean? It's just like... Do you ever feel like it's like... And I know you're a blue belt, so maybe not. But do you ever feel like, hey, man, this guy's going rough on guys. I'm going to go get his ass. <laughs> That's how I was always like, or I'm going to yeah. try. You know what I, mean? I don't I, think I have a lot of that at my gym. It, it pops in every once in a while. I don't um, I don't mind, though. You know what I mean? Like, it, There really isn't anybody that I won't roll with at my gym. Right, yeah. It, it, yeah you got a pretty cool little crew yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt. Um, and belt, regardless of belts and whatnot. I mean, we get a lot of, of, of uh, your guys' bleed over into our gym just because we're so connected. And I think people like to yeah. just to come over and support Jane. Definitely whatnot. looking to come in and do another class over there for you guys. Yeah. Here, uh, I'll be off here at the end of the month. I start my baby leave, so your boy. And one thing I'm finding about this baby, okay, as a black belt, I'm a master at controlling. I'm an expert at controlling people. I cannot hold this little dude's hips down when I'm changing his diaper to save my life. He's all over the place. I, I can hold a grown-ass man down. My son, he, I got poop everywhere, dude. I cannot hold him down. Is he peed all over you yet? Yeah, he's shooting. He's, he's all over the place. He's like, dude, I have lost practice. My daughter was an angel. She would just let, let me clean her. But this little dude is all over the place. Yeah. Um, so, like, old guys, again, um, I feel that don't be afraid is what I'm trying to say. It's like, I know you guys got a lot of stuff going on. Don't be afraid to, you know, you you got a lot on the line. So it's not, it's, it's okay. It's what I'm trying to say. It's okay. It's your life, man. Like, it's okay to be like, hey, I'm not rolling with that guy. This guy is going to hurt me. I'm not want to be hurt. Like, and I think... My, my like we said earlier, my mind has changed on that. When I was twenty, I was like, "Dude, what the heck? You going, why would you want to?" And and here's a question I had earlier: is like, for people who are afraid, don't be for higher belts. Like, don't be afraid to roll with people. Like a lot of higher belts are afraid to roll with white belts because they don't want to get hurt. And now my philosophy was like, you shouldn't be afraid of the person that you wore when you signed the waiver, right? <laughs> I, Why are we taking jujitsu then if you're scared of the guy that you wore when you first signed up? But you gotta think it's because of injuries, right? It's because of yeah. like, it's because you have a lot to lose. These higher belts are like, I I know that this white belt can hurt me because he's spazzy and I don't want to get hurt. And that's why I choose to roll with guys I trust. But are you not confident in your jujitsu to a certain aspect too? Where is is it ego? Right. That you don't want to lose it as a jacked right. white belt that just walked in? Or is it, you know, is it is it really because you don't have a lot to you have a lot to lose when it comes to your home life and you can't yeah. afford to miss work or whatnot? I think there's a there, there's a definite definitive line there between those two. I would lean Towards I would lean ego. that it's ego. I can see that. Especially I, for the smaller guy. Maybe it's because I'm only a blue belt and and like I said barely at that. So it's like my I don't really think I've had a chance to develop an ego yet because I still get wrecked. The so smaller often. brown belt that will be afraid to roll with that new white belt that you know is like, yeah, used to play fucking football. Right. He's like, I don't want to get hurt because maybe the truth, but like, and I, and I, and I'll accept that. But you, every once in a while, you should roll with that guy because that's who you're going to see. Like I've said many times, that's who you're going to see outside of Walmart. That's who you're going to see out of, yeah. of a bar. Most of them don't know. I mean, if they're, if they're, the, if, Fresh, fresh white belt. They don't know a whole lot of submissions. What are they yeah. going to try to Kimura Americana you? So keep your elbows tucked in and fucking figure it out, you know? Like, and I think it's pressure from the professor, right? You have a lot of professor. Like, you're like, I'm a brown belt, and I'm rolling with this lower belt or this blue belt. And I want to want to make him proud. I want to let him know that, like, hey, I am what I am. I am what you honored me with. Right. And I now I'm struggling with this big white belt. But it's like, hey, bro, you're a hundred and you're hundred and sixty five pounds, yeah, yeah, and he's two hundred and twenty five, two hundred and fifty pounds, jacked. 
And you're going to, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a fight, dude. Like, it's, it doesn't matter. Like, jujitsu is great, but genetics are real. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, well, look at fucking, uh, I mean, John Jones and, and Gordon Ryan, their little training footage and whatnot. Like, John were, Jones was, there were some exchanges there. It, Gordon, nobody, nobody's arguing that, that Gordon Ryan's not the greatest nogi jujitsu practitioner likely of all time, but definitely of this current moment in time. And John Jones is not technically on that level from a you know technical proficiency level, but he was definitely uh, holding his own in that match, oh, and that's 100%. just that's genetics. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? Like that's freak genetics definitely are a huge factor. In do you think no gi or gi? What do you think is more gi or no gi? What do you think is more technical? I think they're differently technical, and what I mean by that is, I think having the gi on. There's things that you can obviously do, ways that you can stall. I think from like a from like a chess match mindset, gi is more technical. I think from a opened uh, minded outlook, no gi is more technical. I think that there's things that you can do in no gi, scramble wise, because you're not caught up on clothing and material on the way and stuff like that. But I think. In the gi, there's things that you can do, obviously, to to make things go your way, to to really tune your game in. Six years ago, I would have said, for sure, gi is more technical because of the grips and the lapels and the, like, you have to break grips to get to certain positions. And there's, like, a whole other added element of, like, holding. And even takedowns are harder because... You can't take down. You can't shoot a double on a guy when he's got a hand on your collar because it gets easier for him to sprawl. But... Now I would say it's pretty even with the leg entanglements and the new the newfound way of like fighting for leg locks. That's a whole different science, yeah, of getting to positions and you know like reaping and all this kind of stuff. So I would say it's pretty even now. I would say like there's a very technical aspect to getting to a heel hook or getting into a certain position, and that's something that gi guys don't really do. They don't really train legs, and so. Adding the leg attack game from no gi, the gi guys, it's pretty even now because the gi guys don't really do leg locks because right. you can't heel hook in the gi. We all know that. You can't do any of that stuff. So you can just do straight foot lock, right, or knee bar. You can't really do right. any of the other outside heel hooks, whatever fancy word Gordon Ryan plug here. You can't really do, you can't, you know, you can't do it. So I think it's pretty even. What's the reasoning for that? If if you know the the why you can't like why they don't allow those things in the gi. From what I've heard is, it's because it's because of injuries. It's because of like they don't want people like blowing their legs out, like their knee out, and like reaping in tournaments and stuff like that. It's it's, it's purely injury based. Okay, that that's why it's safety. It's a safety yeah. thing. They don't jujitsu. They don't want you teaching learning leg locks early in the gi because they want you to progress in the sport. You can't be like, because a leg injury happens right now. Right. It doesn't, an arm bar, it's like, oh, he's stretching me. I can feel the pain. I can feel the pain. I can feel the pain. I'm fighting. I'm fighting. I'm fine. I'm fine. Fine. Oh, then it pops. Right. A, a knee, uh, yeah. he gets it, pop, boom. Like, oh, it's wrecked. Like, there's no like, oh my God, it's hurting. It's hurting. And then pop. It's like, right. it's right away. They get to it. And if you don't know what the guy's trying to do, you think you're fine until you're not. And I think with the with the other submissions of with the chokes and the arms, you can fight it a little more and feel the feel the tension before something happens. Right. right. So I think that's a reason why gi jiu jitsu kind of went away from uh, the attacking the legs. Plus, also in a self defense situation, attacking the legs puts you in a vulnerable spot to get punched in the face. Right. So. In early Gracie Jiu Jitsu, self defense is what it was based off of. Closing the distance, getting on top, pounding the guy out, it's position over submission, right? When you shoot underneath a guy, you're going to get smashed. Right. Okay. Makes I mean, sense. That could be bro science. That could be bro <laughs> science. But to like, me, I like think everything we talk about. Yeah, could that be. could be bro science, but <laughs> that's what that's what I think. Do you think Gi works in the street? Like a Gi Jiu Jitsu guy? Do you think like that guy can defend himself in the street? 
Because I get this a lot of time. Like, oh, pajamas, they're going to help you in the street. I 100%. So uh, somebody posted, you ever watch those, um, I think it's Show Your World. Not sh- who, who does the the White Belt Chronicles, Blue Belt Chronicle, the the tape? You know what I'm talking about? It's the t- and it's like oh, a voice yeah, recording. Oh, that's Show Roll. Okay. So somebody called in and left a message, and they were talking about training gi and no gi and how they're both equally as effective. They're like, it's summertime. You're training no gi. You get into a fight in the parking lot when you're, you know, you're not wearing hard any clothes. No gi. Boom. He goes, it's winter time. It's cold outside. You're done training. You walk outside in a hoodie or a jacket. Somebody attacks you. Now you're in the gi. Boom. And it makes total sense. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I think it depends on where you live. I, we live in Southern California. We've got great weather year round for the most part. It's usually hotter than it is cold. Right. So there's not a lot of like. Like Heavy literally, picture. literally was 73 degrees a day and I put a hoodie on because I'm like, <laughs> when else am I going to get to wear this fucking thing? <laughs> I literally is like, Hey man, I'm never gonna get to wear right. this hoodie ever. Right. But if you live in like 73, we're freezing, yeah. put it on Midwest or New York. It fucking Sweating snows my in ass York. off right now. Yeah. <laughs> if you live in New York and it's fucking winter time and somebody's in a, a, a thick coat or something like that, like he's absolutely fuck with me at this fucking wedding. I dare you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I lapel will. drag boom they take it to the tent but like like he was saying did he just bow and arrow him in a tux <laughs> like like he was saying uh i definitely think that like you're not fu- i think he is more functional for street fighting because people are wearing pants people are wearing right you are grabbing clothing whether it's a t-shirt or whatever people aren't out fighting in their underwear right no one's wearing rash guards in the street unless your last name's donaher <laughs> like you know what i mean like you're not like it's not the slippery only. there's grips there's right. backpack because there is whatever right people are wearing things right. so i'm not saying you're going to be hitting you know lapel chokes and stuff with a backpack but like you're grabbing it yeah. against the wall like you like you're, you know what i mean so like I you think absolutely gi- could though too right but i think gi is more functional for a street fighter right if I had to choose, I would say gi is more functional for a street fighter. What do you think about uh, car jitsu? That shit's whack. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? Hey, maybe it's because I'm big. And I'm like, I would suck at this, dude. <laughs> you could not scramble for the back seat. I'm going to seat. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the guy get in the back seat, take the other guy's seatbelt, and pull it around his neck or around the back headrest and choke him, like his knee in the back seat. Henry Gracie posts one video. Of self defense in a car, and someone makes a sport about it. <laughs> There's been some crazy sports like slap fighting. Yeah. That's like car jujitsu is like the equivalent of slap fighting. Have you seen the phone booth MMA? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> there was this thing called X arm. X arm? X arm. So it's arm wrestling, right? You're arm wrestling, and uh, you're. You could win arm wrestling, but you could also punch with your free hand. <laughs> or you could kick. <laughs> you could, like, hold his head down, or you could knee him, and then pin him. You could pin him, or you could, like, knock him out. What the fuck? It's called X-Arm. Um, one of my <laughs> oldest training partners, one of my good buddy, James Cordry, was on X-Arm. Shut the fuck up. He was on it, because we fight together. <laughs> he was gladiator challenge champ. He could have made it to UFC. He was that good. He was, like... You know, he was awesome. He broke his hand on X arm. He did this X arm thing, broke his hand, hand never recovered. His oh, career was over. Oh, fuck. But there is an X arm thing. I'm going to find the clip. I'll post it. Fuck X arm. <laughs> the X arm, dude. That was like, that was like the first, bro. That was like the slap fighting thing before the slap fighting thing. I watched a slap fighting like a clip the other day, um, like a back and forth, and a guy's like running his mouth. And he's, he he slaps he the the first dude slaps him, <coughs> the guy starts talking shit. He slaps the the guy that he slaps the first dude, and starts talking shit like oh, you know that you just felt God you felt God blah blah blah. <laughs> and then as he's running his mouth, the guy that slapped first gets his second shot and knocks dude out cold like on the ground, just fucking doesn't know where he's at like. Tries to stand up, immediately falls down again. I'm like, God damn. Bro, I saw this one, and <clears throat> I don't know. I saw this one but yesterday. I was, you know, if you're watching slap boxing, it's probably on TikTok because that's when I see Mike slap. It's my algorithm, and it's like right. all knockouts. Um, this lesbian chick, I'm saying that. White hair. Uh, so I don't know if she's lesbian, but she had a mohawk, and she had white yep, hair. I know the exact clip you're talking and about. And then this chick, he, she's maxed this chick. This chick's like, where is it? She's like, yeah, I wore that shit. And then... 
and then she slaps the other chick. She wears it, and then just, she comes back again. He he hit this chick so hard. This chick hit this lesbian chick so hard. This chick went straight warm ups, hit a front roll. I was like, oh, I was like, this is not. This is. I mean, I'm not inter. I mean, I guess I was entertained because I was invested, right? But like, they have like fight kits and they warm up and they have like a tough enough and. Like like an ultimate fighter type feel. And I'm like, what are we doing here, dude? Like, how do you train for that? You're just like slapping raw meat. Could you imagine like Rocky? <laughs> the slapping. So so um back in the day when I was a bartender, I was working a Sunday morning shift and it wasn't football season. So there's like nothing on ESPN in the morning time on Sunday. And I look over at the TV one day and I see this and I'm shit you not. And I've I've since I found it, I've searched many times in my life, but I recently found it. They had competitive rock, paper, scissors on ESPN. And you know how like when they do like X Games or something like that, they've got like bios on like the competitors and whatnot. They had full blown like player bios for competitive rock, paper, scissors. Like on the D.O. show? Swear to God, bro. <laughs> and and dude, come, dude comes out. He's wearing like a full blown costume. He's got his hand in an oven mitt to keep his, his throwing hand warm. The wildest shit, dude. Sponsored by Bud Light, of course. That's gay. Uh, uh, <laughs> fucking Bud Light. They're back in the UFC, baby. They're uh, trying to make a comeback. Yeah. Good for them. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, dude, rock, paper, scissors, huh? Competitive um, rock, paper, scissors. I, okay, so today kind of want to also talk about, um, where is it? Well-rounded big struggle sometimes. And what I mean about well-rounded big struggling sometimes is, you you focus so much on being well rounded, as a big. You focus so much about being a good training partner for your littles, mm-hmm. and like I'm gonna pull guard. I don't want to like right. you know I'm the biggest guy in the class. I'm gonna pull guard. I'm gonna play good jujitsu with him, and I want to make sure they're having a good time because I don't want to smash and be a bully so much that like because I want to be a good partner and I want to be well-rounded. I don't want to just be a, like, like I've said before, be well-rounded Win the first time, then the second time, you know, pull guard. But sometimes these big struggle because they're not being the bully that they should be. So when they do go to a tournament and they, they're not, they don't have it in them because gotcha. they're not either. They're not finding other bigs to <laughs> roll with in class or they haven't worked on being a smasher. So much. And Do you so think they, that uh, that plays into like when you choose a school as like um, somebody who's training, looking for similar sized people? Uh, not so much. I think the professor is the main thing is what I would look for when I'm choosing a school. I, I think that like even if you have a, a little small professor, that motherfucker got probably some serious side control pressure. Mm-hmm. Like black belts just have a different kind of pressure. I, don't know, I can't explain it. They just do. So I think you can learn smash stuff from a, a smaller professor. It's just like you got to like, if you have a good professor, he's going to get you smoke. He'll find your smoke. And like, I just feel like as a big, you just focus on being a bully. Like sometimes you got to, sometimes you got to neon belly the little guy. And sometimes you got to mount the little guy. And sometimes you got to head an arm triangle him five times. Like you, especially if you have a tournament. So that's why I feel like these bigs, you need to find your comp classes. You need to find your comp classes where you don't have to feel so bad for being the bully because guess what? You better be that bully when the tournament starts because they're going up against a guy your size. And if you haven't got a lot of smoke with a guy your size, um, you could struggle because you're being too nice to your training partners in class. So if you have a tournament, like, so say you sign up for a tournament, say that you have no comp class and you've signed up for a tournament you're like, hey guys, I got a tournament. So like you roll with me. Like I'm, I'm rolling. Not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not gonna be, I'm not like other times we're rolling, I'm pulling guard, I'm working my half guard, I'm being a well rounded, I'm being a good partner. But I got a tournament in like three weeks. I'm getting ready. I'm start we're starting from the feet. I'm taking it down. I'm putting side control. I'm Kamor in ya. I'm Americana in ya. I'm head arm triangle in ya. Cause I gotta get this stuff in because I gotta get my mind right for my fight. Right. So I feel like I wanted to bring that out there because I've said before, be well-rounded, but you, sometimes you got to know when you got to know when not to be well-rounded as a, as a blue belt. I have a question that kind of relates to this, not necessarily to the size of the person, but something that I've, I've started focusing on. I'd say, let's say the last six months, 
trying to focus on filling holes in my game. Um, so like I used to be really bad at uh, pulling guard just because it wasn't something I did. And if I did it, I usually was unsuccessful. They'd end up on top of me. It'd be all bad. Um, and I wouldn't get them guard. They'd, they'd get side control somehow. So now I'm trying to intentionally pull guard, strengthen that weakness. But is there like a balance of like not abandoning the things that you're good at as well? You should always keep your other tools sharp a little bit. Like, like I'm, I'm not opposed to pulling guard. Like, you're like, hey, I'm working on my guard. Like, you have no tournaments coming up. Right. Right? But, like, say you sign up, like, okay, I'm competing in March. Come January, you're like, all right, I got to start working on my takedown I'm going to try to do. I'm going to start working on my, you know, my submissions from top because I'm, I'm yeah, I got to be like, what What are you going to try to do in that tournament? Like, if you're planning on pulling guard in that tournament. Right. Like, then, yeah, keep pulling guard. But if you're like, no, 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 I'm going to sprawl. I'm going to make him miss his takedown. I'm going to be on top. I want to stay on top. I'm going to knee on belly. I'm going to get my points. I'm going to win. Then, yeah, you need to, like, be able to switch. You got to be able to switch it from comp mode to training mode. And you got to – you're and as a partner in class who doesn't compete a lot, maybe a like casual. Okay. You got to know – they've. this is for them, too, if you're listening. You got to know why is – this big or why is this guy being so aggressive towards me today? What has changed? Maybe right. he's like, be like, Hey, he's got a tournament coming up. Like, I, like I've said my, two couple of weeks ago, I rolled Bashesha on my birthday. Poncho, he did a seminar at the gym. Poncho's like, Hey, roll Bashesha, it's just Matt's birthday. And he, I rolled with them and it was like a nice roll. Uh-huh. And he was like, just playing with me. He beat me of course. And then, <laughs> and Throw that then, up there. It was not a problem. <laughs> no, not even close. Uh, but then I got to roll them again when Poncho was like, hey, we're going to go because right. he's got a big fight coming up. We're going to get him ready. And I felt like I didn't even give him work how bad he beat me. I've said that before. He dominated me. So, but I knew there was the two different roles. Right. He was not training for anything. He's being nice. Right. He's just doing a seminar. I went to, <laughs> I went to headquarters and he was in the zone and I was chum. You know what I mean? So like if you're a casual and all of a sudden someone's like pulling the smoke on you harder than he normally does, maybe he's got something scheduled. Yeah. So that I'm makes sense. Do you think, okay. So rolling into uh, you, another question that I know is getting brought up, gym etiquette. Do you think uh, it is good gym etiquette that if you're training for a comp and you're going to be giving somebody smoke that round, you let them know ahead of time. Like, Hey, I got a comp coming up. This ain't gonna be easy. Oh, easy. Yeah, you can say that. Not 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 being cocky, like no, this yeah. ain't gonna be easy, bro. Right. I'm going for it, but but like, hey, man, I I got a tournament coming up in two weeks, so I want to start standing and right. like just by saying that. Okay. Because a lot of times in gyms you're starting from your knees. Be like, hey, I got a tournament coming up. I want to start standing. Um, do you want to like go over here in a corner with me? Right. And start standing. And he's like, oh, good, I'm injured, and like does what we just talked about earlier. Right. Like, oh, I get it maybe don't roll with me then because I'm looking for like some serious stuff. If you just don't want to do that now, that's fine. Don't feel afraid to say no to a roll, but like say, Hey, I'm looking for some smoke and, or and even maybe tell your professor, be like, Hey, I want to get ready for the tournament. Like I, I would like to start standing sometimes. Can I go over the corner? And that professor should be like sending you guys like, Hey, so-and-so go roll with Kenny. Hey, so-and-so you, 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 he's got a tournament. Start standing. Like a lot of times Poncho would be like, you guys over there, big guys over there. Or like everybody over two hundred over here, everybody under two hundred over here. Right. So like you knew that like big guys are throwing it down. Right. Yeah. Jay, uh, Jay's actually been separating class like that recently. I think it was actually for that last upcoming tournament yeah. that they were doing. But it's just something that a professor will do usually. Yeah. Um. So uh, let me see what we got here. We okay. First of all, since it's Halloween, we got a crazy question. Oh shit! Bring it up. Um. Or I'll bring it up, or it doesn't matter. You can bring it up. Bring it up, and I'm going to bring up the Christians from Oast Nation so we get into some questions here. Um, let's see what's going on here. Let me see. Pull it up real quick. So before you get into that one, I got one that's um, from uh, Amor on Etiquette from Monty Sheehy, a 6 a.m. -er at my gym. Shout out to him. Um, he's all proper etiquette. Being invited onto the mat, not asking black belts to roll, et cetera. What is the etiquette for that? And so as me, for, for me as a big, this is kind of like a two-edged sword. Like well, growing up, it's like you can't ask a higher belt to roll. That was like a thing. At our gym, it's not so much a thing. 
everybody can kind of ask everybody to roll. I heard black belts though, still. Yeah, but like for me, like as a, no one wants to roll with the big guy, right? So like as a big guy. So you're like, please ask me. I was like, <laughs> and now they really don't want to roll with me because I'm a black belt because they can't ask. Uh -huh. So like I've given their excuse not to ask. <laughs> so, so you know what I mean? So it's like, ask me to roll. I'm down. Like, like for me, I've always been down. I don't try to, if I'm injured, whatever, I'll let you know. But if I like, I'm down to roll with anybody. It doesn't matter. Even like, so, but like, yeah, you, there usually is an etiquette. You don't ask a black belt to roll. Some people go as far as you don't ask anybody higher belt than to you them roll. Wow. I think that's not cool, but, uh, there's crazy etiquette. There's when you're tying your belt, you can't, um, face the professor. You have to turn your back to him. That's an old rule. Okay. Yeah. I've never seen, I've never heard that rule, but I've seen people do it and not known exactly. I'm like, oh. and I don't know that either. But for me, like that was a rule that I was taught when I was younger. So I do that. Um, I just do it because I'm not trying to like ruffle any feathers, but like, it's not a rule I'm dying on. I saw someone facing me tying their belt. I wouldn't even give a crap. You know what I mean? Does Poncho, um, is he pretty, He's got traditional. No, no, he is. Yes, very much. Like if you take in a class and I've kind of added the one thing I do add is like walking onto the mat, waiting. Like if you're late. Right. Right. You full gear, you're ready to go, but you're mm -hmm. late. You wait for the black belt to wave you onto the mat. That's been a, and I'm, I'm cool with that. And that's kind of one I still do. And I still like people do it too, whether they're in my class or whatnot. Um, funny that Monty brings it up because Monty's always late. <laughs> 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 just, 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 just mess with your money. Uh, <laughs> but like, no, like, Monty's got that purple belt energy, baby. But the okay, guy. Is that a thing? The, the late purple belt? No, just, per, just, per, okay. So purple belt energy. I, I see memes all the time and whatnot. And it's, it's just like, uh, you know, when the purple belt knows that class just started and he's got his gi on, but he's going to wait to walk in late. It's a purple belt thing or it's an ultra heavyweight thing. We've talked about before. Like, but like, it, is it like a, is it like a, when you're a purple belt, you don't have to do warm ups? Like, no, you do. Okay. So it's just, it's just what they do. It's just the culture you're that in they there now, baby. Like you're a purple belt. Like if you get a purple belt from your professor, that's basically him saying like, stick with me, man. You're going to be a black belt. Yeah. Like, like a purple belt is a huge belt to get from your professor. A purple belt lets your pre professor saying like, you are on your way. Now you're not a blue belt. You are a purple belt. Like you're an advanced belt. You are going to be a black belt under me if you just keep it after it. So like guys who get the purple belt, congrats because you made it. Like purple belt is one of the coolest promotions because you're not a novice anymore. Right. You're like a higher level uh, in the gym. You've That's got some advanced technique. You're freaking second row, dude. Yeah. You're not facing the class. But your second row, the only brown belt's in front of you. Right. Like, you're there, dude. Like, there's a lot of people be standing behind you now. You're a purple belt. So, like, you know, purple belt, get a little swag to them. They'll walk in a little late. They'll do little things. But, uh, yeah, no, like, for sure. Like, so that's where you get the whole, the purple belt walks in late or the, you know, purple belt's taking your girl. We've talked about, like, all that. Like, the purple belt energy, baby. Like, they're, they're, they're big dogs now. Like, they're here. You know? Black belts, you know? <laughs> uh, when you posted that... <laughs> The fucking meme, the clip about when you mentioned the purple belts, purple belts here to steal a girl. And at the end, somebody commented, I was not expecting that ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, another, another, you know, the memes, man, they just keep coming. I can't, I can't shut it off, guys. I'm sorry. Um, which we're going to have some guests on here. Some uh, other meme pages, real popular ones, they've already reached out to me saying they want to be on the podcast. So that should be a fun, uh, We'll talk about our most viral memes or whatever, and what they mean. Or I think you guys should be forced to bring your top meme and have a meme battle. I think we should have a meme grappling tournament, and we should find out who the baddest memer for real there you go. is. Is there a lot of... I don't know what belts these guys are. Is there a lot of jujitsu meme pages? Uh, there's a couple of like BJJ Laughs guy. Um, I've seen him. White Belt Chronicles. I don't know. He, if he's a white belt, too, he might have some trouble. Uh... There's a, there's a, there's a lot of uh, BJJ Ocean. I haven't seen that. Um, Grapple Lordy. I don't know. There's a lot of them, but they're they're you know. There's only one O's Nation though, baby. There's only one O's Nation, hands down. <laughs> That's only, a one man show. That's a one man show, dude. It's a one man show. I got them all scheduled. I don't even put they're, they're all scheduled for the week. They just come at their own thing. Nice. So, but uh, 
Did you find that question? Yeah, I got it. This is a Halloween edition. So this is a, we got this question. We asked a question. We'll send us questions to the podcast. And this guy, what's his name? <sighs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to say his name. Oh, what's his, uh, his profile. It is Ronzilla Grappling. Ronzilla. Okay. Idea for podcast. Worst or weirdest training injury. Mine is a torsion where my balls twisted on each other. <laughs> okay. My uh, worst injury I've ever had, obviously, my, when I got leg kicked sparring and I blew my knee out, was a brutal knee injury. was my worst. My first knee injury, PCL, MCL, ACL, torn. Jesus. Um, all at one shot. And I freaking, like, it wrecked me. So that's my worst injury. But I do have another second injury that was just kind of like, I was just hurt for a couple day for like a week. When you're doing Muay Thai, you wear a cup, mm -hmm. a jock strap. Well, one of my testicles <laughs> had got isolated outside the cup. Okay. And was just chilling <laughs> on the inside of my leg. Everybody else is just chilling in the house all cozy. He's just out front in the front <laughs> yard. He's just out in the front it's yard. Water in the bushes. And this is before TRT, so he was he was a he was nice. And he was just a beautiful testy dude, just chilling. <laughs> and I got inside leg kicked on an isolated island. Oh! <laughs> and I'm telling you Did right it now, explode? I saw Jesus, dude. Oh my god! It was the worst leg kick I've ever like. <laughs> absolutely brutal, dude. So that was probably that when he said the torso torsion of the yeah. testicles, that immediately came to my mind because that I've had an isolated <laughs> incident like that with an inside leg kick, and uh, brutal, bro. Absolutely brutal. Well, I've never, I've never had a uh, a jujitsu, a, a major jujitsu injury. I've gotten hurt and been sore a couple. Dude, of weeks next back. week's gonna be crazy when you talk about your injury. You just jinx yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so he has a follow up. <clears throat> this is where it gets dark and Halloweeny. Worst thing to happen while rolling. My buddy, I'm not gonna say his name, dropped dead on me while rolling. I was investigated for two weeks and called into the police station. Every few nights in the middle of the night for questioning. After the toxicology report came back two and a half weeks later, it was discovered that he died from an aneurysm. So for two and a half weeks, this guy was getting harassed by the police because they thought he killed his training partner. Ron Zilla killed a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Burgundy. There's, oh. a, there's a meme there. See how quick that works? That's how fast it goes. I'm not like being vendicious with, I'm not, you know, I'm not being like, like planning my memes, like, oh, so and so's coming to make a meme about them. Like, they just come to me, like, yeah. That. But, uh, no, <laughs> kill the guy. And you know, it's like he said it was like 90s, 1990s. Yeah. A little backup. It was like in the 1990s. So, you know, it was in a garage. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. And, like, that's why. Yeah. He states, uh, I, I, I don't want to, again, divulge too much. Um, but he said, yeah, this was way back in the mid 90s. Not many people knew about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or submission wrestling in Virginia at the time. Um, that's all I'm going to say on that. I want to. <laughs> yeah, wild, bro. Yeah, yeah. Kill the guy? Yeah. That's, Dude. Dude. So, Ronzilla, shout out to you for um, sticking with it after that in the 90s because that's a fucking. Bro, he's probably like, what? If he's still grappling, Ronzilla's probably like. All I can think of is, is when. Of that situation in the 90s. This is like the uh, UFC 1, 2, 3 era. Yeah. So it's like Rogan constantly refers to it as it's, it was like the equivalent of doing porn. Yeah. Like just the taboo-ness of it. Like in the 90s, like that was. Cage fighting? Yeah. Cock fighting? Yeah. Know. Yeah. That's. Th th there was a real kind of like. Imagine. Doing, imagine like your husband goes to train with some dude in a garage. And yeah. He dies. Yeah. Just put yourself in the. Put yourself in the the wife's shoes. Yeah, that'd be fucking wild. I'm gonna go work out with Rodzilla. Rodzilla. Yeah. That's a, a Ronzilla. Sorry, Rodzilla's a porn star. I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. With you. <laughs> I'm gonna go work out with. Uh, uh, I'll be back, honey. Uh, what's for dinner? Oh, just hamburger helper. All right, it's you know, hamburger helper. That's definitely Virginia. Uh, so he goes. He doesn't come home. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, we were working out, and he he died. Like, what did you do? You killed him. He died in Big Mike's garage. Yeah, dude, like <laughs> that's brutal, dude. Like on a, on a load of laundry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, 
And they didn't have mats like mats back in the no, day. No, they had those like little square ones that you could like could the be it'd be mats or they could be like your kids' playroom. Yeah, puzzle piece together. Yeah. There's, there's a fucking A. The letter A. <laughs> <laughs> there's a freaking there's a little R I P yeah. is what I'm there's you know what I mean? There's yeah. a letter R I P. So that's a wild story, dude. Um <laughs> let, let's get into some more ones. Uh from Wendy the Barber. Kenny's wife. It's my wife. Mrs. Armbar. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not privy to this question ahead of time. She's they like, talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> Fight. Fuck. Mary. <laughs> okay. Fight. Fuck. Mary. Steven Seagal. Chuck Norris. The dad from Family Matters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is easy. This is easy, and I don't know why this is easy, but this is easy. It's easy. Yeah, I know yeah. who I'm fucking. Yeah. Uh, I'm fucking the dad from Family Matters. Uh, I'm fighting Steven Seagal, and I'm going to marry Chuck Norris. I don't know if people know this, but Chuck Norris is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. Machado. Yep, he yeah. is. So, uh, and has been, like, he started training in, like, the 90s. Like, he saw the uh, the writing on the wall and fucking went after it. So, that man lives up to the legends. I'm 100%... <laughs> Fighting Steven Seagal because I think he's a, a gimmick. Yeah. Maybe back in the day, Rogan said he was legit keto and like, I'm not questioning his journey to his black belt, but right now he's a running joke and he's a gimmick. Mm-hmm. And like him actually thinking he's still that, you know what I mean? When he's got like, you know, sitting there with like. Have you seen the videos oh, of him and uh, uh, Anderson Silva? Yeah. Like I told him to hit the kick and. <laughs> And he did what I told him to do. I'm like, shut up, dog. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, you showed Anderson Silva how to knock somebody out. I'm sure he did what I said. You know, I'm like, all right, dude. Like, are there any legit? I've seen this one here. Are there any legit uh, Hollywood uh, guys? It's like, do you think there's any legit guys? Like, I don't think there's any legit guys. I'm like, Chuck, he even shot Chuck. Chuck Norris like 80 years old. I'm like, so. I would fight. <laughs> I would fight Steven, Steven Seagal, Seagal, and I would love every second of it. <laughs> All right. If I lost, I'd be like, damn, Steven's the truth. <clears throat> and I'm not saying I'm the truth, but I'm saying, like, damn, okay, it took me by surprise. But I think I could do pretty good against old Steven Seagal. Um, young Steven Seagal, maybe give me some trouble. I don't know. Um, I'm fucking Chuck Norris. <laughs> Now, if someone clipped that <laughs> and didn't get the context, like when we were talking about earlier, it's like, oh, Matt, Matt wants to fuck Chuck. I'm fucking Chuck Norris just because, you know, I've been a fan and I love them in sidekicks. When he, when he climbed the rope and he told that kid, maybe Chuck Norris was an invisible friend in sidekicks. If you're freaking in your oh, late. What was that fucking blonde kid? If you're name? in your 40s and late 30s, that was like my jam for Chuck Norris and a Walker, Texas Ranger, like kick sidekick through a window. Like, yeah, I just, you know, like. Who doesn't want to? He does jujitsu. Like, I'm in. And I'm marrying Carl Winslow. And the reason I'm marrying Carl Winslow is because he's a good dad. And I didn't have a great dad. And he loves his mom. And he he's loyal. Like Harriet was looked like a bag of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a cop. Yeah. You know, Harriet was like one of the ugliest mom leads of all time. You put some thought into this. I I got caught off guard. He's loyal with this question. Carl Winslow's not gonna. Matt has had a few days to Carl, stew on this. Carl Winslow's not gonna let you down. <laughs> He's gonna be there when Eddie joined the Dragons. He was there to get his brother out of the jail. You know what I mean? Just a little annoying kid come over every day. Aunt Rachel just stopping by all the time. They're sweet ass. I'm in. Carl Winslow is a dad's dad. I'm 100% into Carl Winslow. Obviously, you know I watch Family Matters. Like today that. we learned Matt was a big fan of Family Matters. I was Matters. a big after-school cartoon or yeah, TV TGIF. show guy. Whether it's Saved by the Bell. I got deep knowledge in Saved by the Bell. I got deep knowledge in Family Matters. Fresh Prince. Superman. Avengers of Lois Lane. Ooh, that was my girl, too. God damn. It, does, does Mario... Uh, Lopez followed the BJJ balance. Did I? I swear to God, I saw him fucking like. I think he liked something. He commented. I swear, recently I commented I, on something. I think he liked something, but like, yeah, Mario Lopez. He's got his purple belt. Yeah, he's legit. Under I want to see it. Hey, I want to see it. The world needs to see it, and we're gonna. Sh- I'm gonna make this. This is it. We're cutting. This is a clip. We're cutting this clip right now. 
calling them all out right now. I want Mario Lopez versus Tom Hardy. That's a good, that's I think you guys are the same fucking weight. You guys are both old. Purple belts. You guys are both getting after the real way. You're right. sparring. You're not doing that fake celebrity shit. You're after getting after it. The world needs it. We need it. We need Mario Lopez versus Tom Hardy for charity, for whatever. Let's share this clip. They got to be close to the same age, too. Yeah, let's share this clip. Let's make it go viral. Let's use this platform to send it. Tom Hardy, Mario Lopez. We're gonna we're gonna post this. We're gonna tag him. You repost it and also re-tag everybody them. just tag the shit out of Mario Lopez and Tom Hardy till they block you. <laughs> just spam them. Tom the Blast, you follow O's Nation. You are good friends with Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy is oh, like they train like that. That's like Tom Hardy is like part of that. Okay, work some magic. Hey man, it's time to make this happen for charity. For sure. The world needs to I know. think Tom Hardy would be down. I think so, too. He I seems think, pretty game. And I think Mario Lopez, he's always boxing and sparring. Like, And I, I, I know he competes also. So I think they'd both be down for charity. I think it'd be great. Be great, like, at a, some like, super fight, like, yeah. special thing. Like, I the think, UFC Invitational. They always have... Uh, like, special fights. Yeah. Like, I would love that. So yeah. let's make it happen. Tom Hardy, Mario Lopez... <laughs> Tagging Dana White in it too for, for the UFC Invitational shit. He do, they do the the whole grappling thing like it's like once a month or some shit like that. Set it up. There you go. If you could only use one submission for the rest of your life, what would it be? Did I ask this one last week? No. Um, submission wise, no gi like reverse head arm triangles a lot in no gi. That's kind of like what I always end up getting a lot. Um, I need to see that again. You um when you taught that the other day, Nate and I were talking about it a couple of days later. Yeah, and I remember it being super effective, but I forgot the setup for it. Reverse head arm triangle is probably my go to no gi. My gi, I love you know, I love lasso spinning, inverting, coming up, hitting triangles, hitting arm bars, anything from there. I like, um, I do this arm bar where I attack the near arm from side control, which I have a demo of that on Os Nation BJJ YouTube. If you want to check it out, it's a sneaky arm bar they won't see coming. I think that's what it's called. Um, where I pin the arm down, crucifix, and the arm I'm pinning down, that's the arm I'm taking. So those are probably my favorite submissions. What about you? Um, Nogi, uh, back take, arm trap, um, rear naked. I'm a big fan of that. And uh, I would say in the gi just because I think it's fun. I think it's a fun choke to set up. I think there's a, a fun different few ways to set it up. And I think it's a, a fun looking like it looks really technical, like a bow and arrow. If somebody lands bow and arrow, you're like, oh god damn, that was advanced. Arrow. You know what I mean? It's For it's sure. a good looking choke. Um, so I, I go that. Anyways, again, guys, I want to thank everybody who uh, tuning in, everybody who's listening, everybody who's sharing us, everybody who's you know helping us grow. Um, before Kenny dies on us over here, I want <laughs> I want to just say uh, we appreciate you guys. BJJ Balance on Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music. Everywhere you can stream your podcast, full episodes available on YouTube. YouTube, you want to watch us, you want to see more of the context of how we're talking and banter back and forth. You want to catch that Halloween episode next year where we're in full gi. Yeah. That will be um, where you can see that. Um, also, um, don't be afraid. Uh, if you want to be a guest, if you got us an interesting story, an interesting come up in jujitsu, and like, of course, we do want to get big names as guests but i also want to get you guys as guests if you got an interesting story tell me your story in a dm tell me why you'd be a good guest and we can make that happen if you don't live in socal we're working on getting to a uh, where we can actually have like a phone call or a skype type deal yeah we'll figure that out um but yeah what's your story what why why would you be a good guest uh on um on our podcast. And we want to talk to you guys. We want to get to know you guys. We want to grow with you guys. We want to grow together. And I just want to say thank you. And uh, yeah, anything else? No, honestly, it's it's been a blast. We're, we're steadily approaching episode 10. And uh, I think that'll be... Are we going to take a, a December break? I don't know. I'm off. Yeah. I'm oh, off. Good point. Good so point. I could good do more weekday, I, whatever. Okay. I don't, so I don't think okay. so. 
We'll, we'll talk about that. Shortly. I don't think so. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm, I think we're too early to be taking. We can't be taking no break. Yeah, we're just getting started, <laughs> baby. We're doing a one stripe white belt podcast right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's been a blast, and I'm I'm super. Uh, I I love putting this together every single time, and uh, um, it's a lot of work, but it's uh, it's it's such um, the payoff is so there. I'm just I'm thankful to. Yeah, I mean, this has been a wild ride, and we're just getting started, and that's all. And, and you know, again, thank you guys. So. Until next time, my name is Matt at O's Nation. This is Kenny at the Freak Party. We'll catch you around. O's.